things have to be visible in my life. Things have to be visible in my life. Not just visible. Extremely clear. Super clear and visible. Every area. And all things. Now Satan is hoping you're lazy in this area or you're childish. That you tolerate and allow many areas of your life to have many things not visible to you. You have a lot of blind spot, a lot of darkness in your life. You see, a lot of times we think of darkness this way. It's evil. No, 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 no. There are those who do evil in darkness. Don't mix up the two. They like darkness to do their evil. Darkness is that which don't make things what? Visible. Clear. So not because you have a lot of darkness, you're evil. In truth, it doesn't mean, forgive me, Father, you're stupid. Lack of wisdom. You have, you have a blind spot, and it does, especially if it doesn't bother you. But you're stupid if it doesn't bother you. Can we all have some darkness? But it's when it doesn't bother you. The fact that you can't pray and it doesn't bother you. The fact you don't know what to pray for and it doesn't bother you. The fact you can't navigate your resource and your family and different things and your ministry and it does not bother you. Then you're comfortable in darkness. Do you understand this? The Bible says all the days they had sit in darkness. Say, I won't tolerate darkness. I won't tolerate darkness. I'm a child of light. I am a child of light. I am part of God's lunar system. I'm God. I'm part of God's lunar system. For this dark world. For this dark world. Do you know God will you accountable for that? Say, you're the light. Let it shine. He said, if there's an area that's not visible, let me, let me give you a practical example. When something is going on with Jazzy's life, if Jackie has the light in that area, when she hears it, she can explain it, make it clear. That is light. She makes what was puzzling Jazzy becomes what? Visible. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That is letting the light shine. The Holy Spirit, do you know what he's doing in you? I know we make him just about everything else. Oh, he makes me dance. Oh, he makes me... Wasting time and nonsense. The spirit don't understand how to use the Holy Spirit. He is to make everything what? Every crooked way what? Straight. Straight. Yeah. Every area that you're not clear and make it clear. He illuminates that which remain hidden from you. And at the same time trying to wrap obedience in you. One part is to show you. The other part is to get you to what? Do it. Because some of us can have light, have visibility and clarity, and you're not what? Obedient. Mm -hmm. But no, no, no. We like the, the, the interestedness of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, instead of talking of tongues and doing all the things, I would rather say one clear. Just give me some light. If the Holy Spirit can't give me light, he's not serving me very well. Because I can't understand what God wants. I can't understand how to live my life. And if he's not giving me enabling ability and obedience, also he can't help me. It's more of an endurance than a help then. And he's not. He's the helper. What is he helping you with? Where things are not clear, making them visible. Do you understand? Where you're struggling and you're obedient, teach you how to be obedient. Where you're lacking the right atmosphere and environment, he gives you grace so you have strength, power, and ability. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Even all the other weirdness. The very fact they're so weird telling you they don't have light. Ask them to explain what they do. You know the Bible says you're supposed to give an account for everything? Every manifestation you do? If they can't explain it, tell them stop doing it. Jesus' name. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. When they tell Jesus he's driving out demon. By Bezubah, could he explain it? Yes. yes! He said, let's look at an obvious principle. And he made it clear. Hallelujah. Glory. Let's continue verse 14. Because light makes things visible and clear. Therefore, he say, awake. First, you got to be aware of what's going on. Oh, sleepers. Don't realize that you don't have light or you are in light and not realizing you have light. Amen? So it's the first thing is to become aware. Awake. Stop being so unaware of what's going on in you and around you. 
and arise, pay attention, amen, from the dead. And Christ shall shine. Now let's go back. Let's break the scripture up. The first part, he says, therefore I say awake. I want you to get up, first of all. Stop sleeping. Stop being so unconscious. I get you're un incompetent, but you're unconsciously incompetent. First, I need you to become conscious incompetent. I need you to become aware of all the areas that you don't see or know what's going on. So I need you first awake. Amen? Then he goes, arise, get engaged. This should bother you and you should start seeking it out of me. Arise from the dead. Stop being passive, run over, neutralized, ineffective. And the Bible says, when you arise from your death, from your present, incapable, amen, state, the Bible says, and Christ shall shine, amen, and make day dawn upon you and give you light. He said, then I will shine true. I know you don't have no light, but I will illuminate like the day that I'll come through. What does scripture tell me? Christ don't want to shine true when you're not awake. He wants you to be able to be a witness to testify that the light has what? Dawn upon you and coming true. It is one thing for others to see the light and go, how does things become so clear and visible to you? There's another thing for you to see it. And Christ said, I want you awake. I want you arise, paying attention, engage. Then I will dawn upon you. Now we would like him dawn upon us, but we want to sleep. We don't want to rise. No, if the moon don't take its position, the sun can't what? Shine through. Why some of you, for Christians, I'm speaking here strictly to the church. When the, the church has the light, when the light is not coming true, she is either awake or she has not arise. Not in position. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. To be arise is to become what? Erect. Yeah. In position. In position. So the light can shine. Yes, to be asleep is to be unconscious. When you're sleeping, you, you understand? The Bible says, if the strong man was not asleep, no one can what? Rob his house. The reason he, he lost his belongings is because he was what? Asleep. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You see? Unless you can tie him up. Then you can rob him. Satan gives you all kind of sleep that though you have the light, you're not conscious of it. You're incompetent, but you're unconsciously incompetent. When you are awake, you also remain incompetent. But you have become conscious incompetent. You can see what you can. Yes, I can see, but I can't do what I'm seeing yet. I'm awake. But I'm awake. Then Christ said, arise. I'm ready to lay hold of him who lay hold of me. He said, then I will shine through. I'll, you see, I'll, I'll dawn upon you. The light will be bright. And I'll let the light what? shine through. He said, I know you don't have no light. But when you are awake and arrive, I will dawn upon you and I will push through you. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Now you're consciously competent. Now you become consciously competent. You are awake. You know all the darkness. You live in a dark world. You know God put a charge upon you. You're the salt. He said you're the light. And he said, I want you to let it shine. You know you have no light of your own. But you know Jesus. He said, I'm the light of what? The world. And he goes, I live in you. And you know Jesus make a demand. He said, I want you awake. This is why he was always fighting with his disciples. There are two things he was always rebuking them. Why you always falling asleep and why your faith so little? He said, I have to stay awake. 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 Light is dawn upon me. Light is dawn upon me. It wants to shine through me. God demand. I let my light shine before men. Here's a secret. I'm not talking here about salvation. Every Christian already has salvation. Your reward will be dictated on how well you let the light shine. And how well you let the light shine is de determined by how much you are awake and arise. You ever wake up? You're awake, but you haven't quite arrived at your body and everything's still liturgical. Yeah. When you wake up and you arise, you're, like, you're alert. Yeah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You can't be sleeping, but you have to also be alert. Christ talked a lot about pay attention, be on your guard, be diligent, be cautious. 
This is our eyes. In Isaiah, he goes, Amen. Awake, awake, you sleeper. Deep darkness cover the earth. Not just deep darkness. Deep, dense darkness cover the earth. The glory of God is upon you. The light is upon you. In fact, greater the darkness, it should summon you to release more what? Light. Me and God used to have to discipline me a lot too, so often. I get some challenging situation. I'm the Lord. Why do I get this kind of situation? It's a son. Greater the darkness, greater the light to what? The opportunity to shine the light. Are you listening to what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus. The Lord said, Amen. He wants us to be awake, stop sleeping, and arise from the dead. Stop being dead, stop being passive, inactive. Stop sitting back and let darkness cover you and the people and the house around you. He said, the candle is lit and placed on a lampstand. You don't sit back and let the craziness take over. You arise. You engage. So the light of Christ can what? Come through. Hallelujah. He says, stop being dead. To be dead is to let the darkness dominate you. Amen? And Christ shall shine, make day dawn upon you and give you light. So we are children of the day. We are, we are children, children of the day. day. We have to operate in every way as children of the day. Your thoughts are not supposed to be dark thoughts. No, I'm not, I'm not even talking evil here. Evil is just messed up. That's a different story. I'm talking, when you think, you, you're not even clear in your own head. Okay. When you speak, you cannot convey clarity. When you do things, people are puzzled. It's one thing for them to be puzzled because it's beyond the natural realms. Like what Christ was doing, they're going, where do you get these up? They keep going, where did he get these ability? Isn't this Joseph and Mary's son? How is he able to do these things? That's a different story. There's one thing you're doing things that it's so dark, dark that you're like, that person don't know the right from the left. How could they put those two things together? That's just crazy stuff. Do you understand this? If you're struggling here, you need to pray to the Lord and say, Lord, grant me grace to be awake. Grant me grace to pay attention that I'm risen. That Christ may dawn upon me and give me day. Amen. That he will make day dawn upon me and shine through me. I expect every thoughts, every words, every deeds to be a manifestation of what? Light. A testimony of what? Light. I expect every thoughts. This is the area Satan going to deal with you. Amen. Every words, every manifestation to be a testimony of light. Therefore, God expect me to be awake, risen, and abiding. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I must abide, I must be awake, and I must be risen or paying attention. How many of you would, would, would love this? You have Berkeley's as always. Imagine you're having a tough day. A tough day is simply this. Things are not... You're, you're struggling in abiding, or you're struggling in awake, or you're struggling in staying risen, alert. So as a result, darkness is seeping in. And you can call Jazzy, and because she is your brother in the war, in this, against this darkness, or, or sister in this darkness, she can bring forth, make things visible and clear. Would you like that? I would love that, my brothers and sisters, and vice versa. My point is, we all have to operate that if one of us run into trouble, someone else can what? Illuminated. Welcome, Princess. Do you understand this? I read Romans, please. Chapter 13, 11 to 13, read. Besides this, you know what a critical hour. So we're in a critical hour. Yeah. Critical yeah. hour. Which, now let me explain that process. It means the darkness is deteriorating faster, meaning like it's destroying things quicker. The world, I should say, not the darkness, the world is deteriorating faster. Hmm. How many of you, every time you listen to the news, the darkness gets worse? Here's a secret. 
They said, they were scientifically, they said, if there was no light at all, in fact, Jesus said this, if he didn't shorten the days, we would destroy each other. You know, if man has no daylight or sunlight, we quickly annihilate all of, all of us. Yes. In darkness, our mind seems to go just crazy. The darker the world becoming, people becomes more what? Evil, they become more susceptible to evil. Do you understand? It's almost like they become paranoid, edgy. Every little sound, they can't take chances anymore. The more darkness, more critical the hour is. The Bible said, beside this, you know what a critical hour this is. How oh, it is high time now for you to what? Same word as Ephesians. High time for you to what? Wake up. Stop sleeping. Stop being so unconscious to the present state of the world and your present state. Both as a light being and as a light being in darkness. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to become conscious of both. The light side is the supernatural side influencing the natural atmosphere. You understand? The darkness is the natural, is the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is it for you to wake up out of your what? Sleep. Amen. Rouse to reality. Wake up to the present state of affair. Do, do, do you understand? Some of us are living in such darkness, especially we children of the light sometimes. We're not even aware of the darkness or the present state of the world. You understand? Or conscious that you are in the light and you ought to be operating as the light. You are unconscious to the reality of light. That is a problem. That just tells me one thing. You are sleeping. You are sleeping. The more awake you start to be, the more you'll start to notice the darkness you allow and tolerate around you and in the world. Yeah. The more sleep you are, the more it shall infuse like there's no tomorrow. Amen. The Bible said, rouse to reality, for salvation, final deliverance is near to us now than when we first believed. Are here to trust in and rely on Christ the Messiah. The night, amen, is far gone, and the day is almost. So Christ is constantly working to make day dawn upon you more. The night should be passing. Amen? The night is far gone, and the day is almost here. Let us drop, fling away the works and deeds of darkness, and put on the full armor of light. Mm -hmm. You have to stop using things like probability and all these nonsense and pray and learn to live and move and abide in light. Yes. Hmm. Still we live in like people still in darkness, like we are sleeping and not arisen. Yes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? In the fog. Living in the fog, talking nonsense, thinking nonsense, mm -hmm. involved in nonsense. Not clear. You understand? What we have become, not clear how to get reward, not clear how we're going to get measure, not clear on the, en the enemy. Your whole Christian walk is a big fall. As a result, you waste your days. The only thing you can look for from Christ is a good beating. Because you don't have a clue what's going on. You do not understand you have been placed on a hill. You do not understand you are to let your light shine. So God is glorified through what's coming through. You do not realize you are to be clearing your thoughts, clearing your words, clearing your deeds. You are to stay awake. You are to be risen. And Christ wants to make day. He wants to illuminate everything in you and around you. You do not understand. Everything, not something, ought to be visible. Clear. And if it don't, you ought to what? Pray. Are you listening? Look at somebody and say, do you know everything is supposed to be visible to you? Mm, you, know you know that everything, everything is supposed, is supposed to, be to be visible to you. Do you know everything is supposed to be clear? Do you know everything is supposed to be clear? 
Do you know the reason you are sitting on the hill? Do you know the reason you are sitting on the hill? And God make others see you. And God makes others see you. Because you can make it visible to them. Because you can make it visible to them. You guys know the story of Bush, um, Queen of Sheba and um and um Solomon. the Queen of Sheba and Solomon. She traveled miles. Yes. And bring tremendous riches to Solomon. Yes. The Bible said, and no question she put forth to Solomon, he could not what? Answer. Yes. yes. Knowledge. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Like. She had, yes, she had lots yes. of issues she needed to deal with. Yes. And nothing she presented to Solomon, he could not what? Answer. Sorry. Yes. Do you know that's you? <laughs> yes. You sure someone walk up to you and put forth some questions you can answer them? Do you know it's expected? You know why we can't? We're like children. Mm. Not awake, not risen, mm -hmm. not realizing. The Bible, Christ Himself wants to make the day dawn of you. Mm -hmm. He needs you to illuminate. Mm -hmm. When people cry out to Him, He wants to show them the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. When they cry out, remember. Uzziah, when Israel, when Jeremiah cry out, yes. he wanted to show them where the matter can be solved. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, may the Lord have mercy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Verse 13 said, Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably. Amen. And be commonly, as in the open light of day. Not in reviling, carousing, and drunkenness. Not in immorality, debauchery, amen? Sensuality and licentiousness. Not in quarrel and jealousy. You don't have time for such things because you have to be making things visible and clear. Mm -hmm. You don't have time for the foolishness. Amen. Yes. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Your prayer life should not be slackening unless you have so much light you're in such thanksgiving. <laughs> I have to keep praying because I always believe there's an area yet I haven't illuminated through the light. Right. There's an area I've not become visible or clear yet. Yes. We're going to wrap this process up. Let's go to Psalms 72 verse 7. Psalms 72 verse 7. Glory. Please say amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, six fifty. One of the things we have on each other as Christians too, our expectations are too low. Mm -hmm. We tolerate. You know, I'm not talking the, the kind of, from a love perspective, you should always tolerate your brothers and sisters. But from a truth perspective, you should have an expectation that they grow in light, where things are becoming visible and clearer. Mm -hmm. We tolerate mediocrity. It's okay to tolerate love and their weakness and their challenges. But you're never to accept complacency and mediocrity because they're in the same light that you are in. Mm -hmm. We tolerate their childishness for a time, but it's not to persist. It doesn't make it grow. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't grow. encourage them to grow. Do, do you understand? Amen. You should tolerate their lack of visibility and clarity for a while. Then if you love them, you gotta go, brother, you've been, you've been a Christian for a long time. Christ, I know, wants to dawn. He demands you be awake and risen. Mm -hmm. He wants to dawn day upon you. He wants to shine through you. Still, I hear your words and your, your, your activities, and they're absolutely like someone living in utter darkness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is not to be so. Mm -hmm. It is not a judgment. It is a statement of fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To judge them is to go, like, you are this, but there's no expectation and no praying for them. Mm -hmm. But you ought to encourage them. One of the things I love about our church, the Lord doesn't let us become complacent. There is so much truth, a constant demand to what? Grow. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? 
Jesus did not tolerate any tree that didn't what? Produce. Yep, right I don't know about you, but well, actually some of you I do know. Every day, every second, the enlightenment the Lord has upon me expands. Every second. Yeah. Every day. I am rarely in the same level of enlightenment from day to day. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. Something like this exposed and making more visible daily. Mm -hmm. It's how it ought to be. The Bible said this in Psalm 72 verse 7. 